Hello and welcome to Cracking the Cryptic. Now today was quite a special day for the Times newspaper which introduced Sudoku because they reached Sudoku number 10,000 as you can see here. Um, and as part of the commemorations for this there was an article published in the paper by Hugo Rifkind who uh, wrote some of the first articles about Sudoku after the Times started publishing it. And the article kind of explains how the paper began to cover Sudoku and um, very kind, and how it, it goes on to explain how Hugo himself is not very good at it, but has had a lot of involvement. I got a mention here at least, which is nice, although in fact I suppose um, my little wife, whose quote made it, where I say my wife despairs of the addiction to puzzles feeling, perhaps rightly, that people trying to assume that there's one correct solution to every puzzle struggle with life's more variable challenges, which is something she certainly feels, um, but it's very kindly credited me as the only person to have won both the Times Sudoku Championship and the Times Crossword Championship. And um, to commemorate the day, they also, dis Oops, sorry, one puzzle. Um, they also decided to published two ultra-fiendish puzzles, Old Sudoku Special, ultra-fiendish one, and ultra-fiendish two. Um, and let's see if we can see what the puzzle looks like. This was Sudoku Special, ultra-fiendish one. Now, what I'm not going to do is to actually solve it for you on screen, and that is because Simon tells me that this is extremely difficult. Um, he mentions that there's one X-wing that you have to do, and if you've been following his videos on specialist techniques, you will understand what that is. The first X-wing is on nines in rows one and nine, apparently. And then um, there's swordfish on sixes, and then, and then another X-wing possibly after that. So it's a really difficult puzzle, apparently. What I'm going to do instead is tell you how I do it, which... Um, will disappoint people who really are experts on the Sudoku techniques. And uh, here's my solved puzzle. Now, as you can see here, there's some slightly different colours operating. Obviously the givens are in black, like this eight up here, and my own numbers are in blue. But underlying the blue is what I had to do after I, What I did is spend one or two minutes putting in um, numbers that I could be really, that I could be certain where they went, um, establishing a few like a few um, of the kind of Snyder notation numbers that fit between one or two squares. So the most useful part of that was spotting that nine and six in this column and nine and six in this column in this row mean that in this box down here, 9 and 6 can't be in those cells or in those cells. So 9 and 6 are in the corner cells that aren't already occupied. Hence this little 9, 6 and a line to 9, 6 there. That's to indicate to me that they are a 9 and 6. And at whatever point I got to where I couldn't see an easy way to progress immediately after that. And I don't really spend time looking for x wings because they're very reliant on knowing all the candidates for particular cells and my notation isn't really allowing me to find them. So what I did, and you can just see the remains here of a circle around a six, I assumed this cell had a six in it, which made this one a nine. That gave me, for instance, sixes across the bottom, put me a six here. Um, and that allowed me to make further progress. I could now decide between this six and three where they went because of the six I put in this cell with seven in it now, six there, three there. And I carried on making deductions until eventually I came to a problem with two threes in row three. And that took a minute or two. And at that point I realized that my choice down here must have been wrong. So I got busy. I'd used a pencil for this assumption technique and I got out the rubber and rubbed them all out not perfectly as you can see there's still a few remaining marks but there were quite a few numbers in the cells there's a five up here for instance um, and that allowed me to correct this to nine and six the right way around and after that that allowed me to put in this nine um, that restricted the nines up here into one cell and 
Soon I was able to make much better progress um, and I indeed finished the puzzle without any special techniques just by having got that nine and six corrected there. So it still wasn't a simple puzzle. Um, I recorded my time at the top, six minutes 33, but that's how I went about it. Now, I wouldn't normally get a pen and a pencil and a rubber ready, but the circumstances in which I do that are either when I'm competing um, at an event where I will bring a pencil to be ready to be able to do that, and that's partly because I expect those events to have very hard puzzles, or where I know that this is likely to be a puzzle that requires extra techniques. Something calling itself ultra fiendish as a commemorative special is an example of that. Now the other ultra fiendish puzzle, puzzle two, and again you can see this puzzle from the givens in the dark black printed numbers. Now this yielded much more easily for me, um, but again it's down to luck. So again, you can see much more clearly this time from the blue numbers what I put in as deducible based on the normal techniques and the numbers given, like this three here was very easy because there's three in row eight, three in row nine, three in row seven has to be in this box and two of its cells are already occupied. So that was very straightforward. And a number of things like that resolved themselves. I got, it looks like now five, eight, nine, 10, 13, something like 15 blue numbers written in. And it was then at that point that I had to decide that this was probably where this puzzle was going to need an extra boost. And I got the pencil out. I assumed a one in this cell up here. And any number that isn't written in blue and isn't printed in black is one of my pencil numbers. So I started with assuming the one there, because if it wasn't there in this row, I think I had three, four, two, eight, five, and the last nine. So one either had to be there, which would allow me to work out the six and seven here and make progress off any of those one, six, and seven. Or if it wasn't going to be a one there, if I was going to have to come back and rub that out, the one couldn't be in this column because of that one. So that would be a one, that would be a seven, that would be a six. And again, I'd have three numbers to help with these columns and that would go quite well. Now, as it was on this occasion, I chose correctly by chance. I picked the right cell for the one and that enabled me to finish off the whole puzzle in pencil, but still correctly. And by virtue of having chosen when to make that decision and, and also, and this is quite an important point, choosing a sensible option to make it on, something that's going to give you help whether or not you get it right. So if you get it right, it's going to give you enough help to finish the puzzle potentially. And if you get it wrong, it's going to give you something that really helps you move on. Um, and that enabled me to finish the puzzle in just a fraction over four minutes. Sorry, my time there. So um, in a way, this, this video is just to tell you that there's if you can't grasp the X-wings and the swordfishes and the, all the naked single troubles, there are other ways to finish Sudoku puzzles. And um, I do recommend that. I mean, I have to tell you, you know, I, if you ta test me on finding an X-wing in a puzzle in a very short amount of time, I would really struggle at any point. I don't use that technique much. So learn it from Simon, by all means. And uh, he's very good with that technique, as is Tom Collier who got mentioned in the article a lot, and indeed who wrote an article mentioning X-Wings and his normal techniques. So I do urge you to get hold of that article from the time today. It can be very useful. But um, and Tom Collier is a friend of this vlog, so uh, we're very happy to acknowledge that his skills, which are greater than mine, are worth tapping into. But if you don't have those skills and you don't want to learn them, there are still ways to progress in Sudoku and indeed to solve quite quickly without them. So that's the message for today quite an unusual one. Um, but congratulations to the Times for reaching 10,000 Sudokus and uh, thanks for joining us. Hope to see you next time on Cracking the Cryptic, possibly for some real solving. Bye now.